Hello, Internet, so nice to see you. I'm gonna answer your music theory questions today. So you're telling me I get to make up my own scales? Awesome. Yes, I'm telling you exactly that. You can put any set of notes together, and if you play them enough times, or uh, insist enough on those notes, they will sound like a scale. That is written nowhere that you have to stick to the traditional scales. And indeed, uh, most musicians, for instance, in the late Romantic era, started using new scales for them, which are commonplace today. So, yes, you can invent your own scales. You can take a combination of any four, five, six, seven, eight notes, however you want them, and as long as you make some music with it and you like it, it's legit. Don't stick to what it's written in the books just because it's written in the books. The point of music theory, let me repeat that, the point of music theory is to give you more ideas, not to constrain you to what tradition was doing. You like the major scale, great, write in it, but you don't have to stick to the major scale. What if I started late learning music theory and I want to learn music theory quickly so I won't be at a disadvantage? The best way to learn music theory is always quality before quantity. You want to get sources that give you the right information in the right order. Uh, in my humble opinion, my ebook on beginning music theory, which you're gonna find at the top right of this video, it's a pretty good start. So you can go there, it's a free ebook, you can download it, you can read it, and if I dare say, it is pretty good. Um, that said, you really don't want to go around and uh, read everything you can read about music theory because it's not gonna be in the right order. It's gonna be, many, many of the things you're gonna find may be too advanced for you if you're just starting, and, and everything, all those uh, in uh, influx of information can just confuse you. Take it easy, learn one thing at a time. Even knowing a little bit of music theory if you know it well, could be enough to start writing songs. To start writing music, you really don't need to have a PhD level of music theory. You need to know a few basic elements, what are chords, what are scales, how to put them together, and this already will help you a lot. Beside my free ebook on beginning music theory, I have a whole playlist called Back to Basics uh, that explains all the basics of music theory starting from complete scratch, so I'm gonna link this in the description. That would be, that would be another good place to start. Do you think Wagner was doing this complex thinking when he wrote the piece, or was he looking for something that gave him the tension and that chord did so? Not really a big fan of Wagner, but... Well, if I know my Wagner, he was doing a lot of thinking on that chord. After all, he wrote a four-hour opera practically on that chord, and that chord appears everywhere both in harmonic form, so play as a chord, and in melodic form, so play as a melody or as a sequence of root notes. If you look just at the prelude of the Tristan, you see the Tristan chord appearing at least three times in the first six or eight bars. And not only that, but if you look at the chords on every odd bar, so the first bar, the third bar, the fifth bar, and the seventh bar, if I remember correctly, the root of those chords spell another Tristan chord again. So, in a sense, he built the whole thing. He built the whole opera thinking of this chord. Now, will you make, was he making all the thinking we're doing about uh, secondary dominant triton substitution? Probably not, simply because triton substitution are a modern way to explain that specific substitution, and that probably there wasn't even an idea of substitution at the time, so Wagner could not be thinking like a jazz player, because jazz comes later. And Wagner definitely wasn't thinking about secondary dominance, because the idea of secondary dominant, the idea of explaining those chords as dominance of another key, it comes much later. As far as I know, uh, it's Walter Piston who, in his book Harmony, was the first one to use the term secondary dominant, even if the idea is probably before Piston. But still, it's a 20th century idea. Uh, so Wagner was thinking a lot about those chords, but he was thinking about it in a different way than we do. Actually, most likely he was thinking about this chord in a contrapuntal way, as opposed to just a harmonic way. Maybe. But you can rest assured that he did not write that chord 
by trial and error. He sat down, he searched for the chord, and he made all this reasoning, and he planned a whole four-hour opera before he started writing it. Thank you. Starting right now, one reason why children learn music, or anything, so easily is they don't question the system or the instruction. They just do it. Now adults... Well, and there's, there's pros and cons to that, okay? So I think most people here are under the impression that uh, children learn much faster than adults, and uh, that's not actually really true, okay? Per amount of practice, per hour of practice spent on the instrument, the rate of improvement between children, children and adults, it's not as different as you may expect. Now, I'm not gonna receive a lot of hate email on this one because somehow people want to believe that when they get older, they learn slower. But I'm sorry, it's just not true, okay? Um, what changes is the style of learning. So with kids, you tell them what to do and they do it most of the time. Uh, with adults, you need to explain them why you do all that, and then they do it. So, in a sense, adults have this kind of learning that they go slower on doing things because you have to explain them why you're doing it. But then, when they learn, since they understand why they're doing it, they remember it much better, they understand it much better, then they can do more with that. And again, that's not the fault of kids or the fault of adults, it's just two different learning styles, there is nothing wrong with that. That said, as a teacher, I really do appreciate when I get students who follow instructions, because we can move much faster if you guys follow instruction and do the exercise, as opposed to as if you're discussing forever why we're doing it. I'm not opposed to discussion, I'm glad to answer all the questions, I'm just saying, find somebody who you trust, and then Trust your teacher, and you can improve much faster. Would you say that it's better if I learn all the notes in E standard? Even though I might play most songs that are half a step down, I don't want to think I'm wasting my time if I learn one or the other. Thanks. It really depends how you're thinking about it. So, let's take a small detour talking about the orchestral instrument, and you see in a moment why this is important for us guitar players who tune differently. Let's say you're playing a trumpet in an orchestra in a jazz band. The standard trumpet we play, it's in B-flat. What does that mean? That whenever you see a C on the score and the trumpet player makes the shape uh, on, the, on, 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 the, on, the, on the keys on the, of, the, of the trumpet to, ma to make a C note, the sound coming out of the trumpet, it's not C, it's B-flat. The trumpet in B-flat, when you write C, you hear B-flat. The whole trumpet it makes a sound that is two half steps lower than what is written on the score. Why? Because it's more convenient for trumpet players to think about those notes in that specific way. There are a number of reasons for that, okay? But it's more convenient for a trumpet player to think this way. The same is true for a number of other instruments in the orchestra or jazz band. Saxophones can be in E flat or B flat, depending on the kind of saxophone. Sometimes when you finger a C note, you get a B flat, and for other kind of saxophone, when you finger a C note, you actually get an E flat, not even a B flat. Um, French horns are in F, um, alto flutes are in G, and so on and so forth. The clarinets are gonna go all over the place. There are clarinets in B flat, clarinets in A. The note always indicates what you get when in, on the score, it's written a C. Those are called transposing instruments. People playing those instruments make a distinction between their own pitch and what they're co they call the concert pitch. Their own pitch, or the score pitch, is what they read on the score. The concert pitch is the actual sound that comes out, and they learn to transpose between those really fast. Again, there are a number of reasons for that, but essentially it's because it's easier to execute. Now, if you're tuning your guitar down a half step or a full step, you are doing exactly the same. You are now on a transposing instrument. If your guitar is tuned down a half step, whenever you make the shape of an E chord, you are actually playing an E flat chord. So your pitch, instrumental pitch or score pitch, it's E. The concert pitch you are producing, it's E flat. I, if I were to do that, I will learn my instrument pretending that it's tuned the normal way in E. 
This way, when I switch between a guitar that is in standard tuning or in E flat or in, in D or any other kind of transposed tuning, I already know where to find my notes. But I would also remember that I'm not playing a non-transposing instrument. I am playing now a transposing instrument, so if I'm talking with the piano player, I need to tell him my instrument is a half step lower. My concert pitch is different. So whenever I talk to the piano player and I'm playing an E chord, I'm telling the piano player I'm playing an E flat chord. But when I'm thinking about my instrument, I'm thinking E chord, not E flat chord. This actually makes your life easier. Because, again, this way you can switch between any instrument. Suppose one day you want to play a baritone, which is a guitar tuned down a fourth, okay? That would help thinking, again, about, about this instrument as being transposing down a fourth, as opposed to relearning all the notes, again. Musicians are already doing this in orchestras and jazz bands, and we can do this too.